can't be too careful these days. The dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. Kids sees it plain, frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him, not like this. These folks never saw the calamity coming. But someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Begley and his kindly wife. It was someone like him. Kid sees him there agape in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions, after all. Just ain't got time for answers. The Tunder Brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy. Didn't make it. The Jawsons. They didn't make it. Grady Sr. Grady Jr. They didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? survived as well. And then... What do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city. And he's lived here ever since. We could always see the stars. We just never could reach them, no matter how high we built. Folks voyaged across the boundless sea to found Ceylandia. It was good living here for a while. We fought the Ura decades ago, 
But that was then. Things are different between us now. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. We all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. Kid ain't finished here yet. The cores. They remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be alright. Well, look what we have here. The memorial. The yeah, kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. Windbag Ranch was built for gathering squirt extract and copious supply. Ain't nothing more healthful. Some folks showed up to make a fast buck with nothing but a knife. Other folks came to train their throwing arms. use the place to test their finest blades. Place gets awful slick sometimes. soon enough. Kid comes back from Windbag Ranch, smelling good and ripe.
No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Hit Orchard. Places a dead end in more ways than one. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the Orchard core is long gone too. Pith stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. Pith makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Then Pith lights up like a rodeo. Kid breaks him to bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods, or tell them off. Piv. Kid decides to press his luck. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. Kid ain't never seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Piff put a scare in him. Kid ain't found a core, but at least he found Zolf's precious shrine. The gods ain't gonna catch you if you fall. Now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. The Breakers. Ain't no one could outrun them. Or their arrows. The Gravers. They arm a justice. They seemed unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> 